Hey guys, Jay here. I've been getting this question a lot. Well, not a lot, but I've been getting this question. Um, can you laser engrave bottles without a rotary tool? Short answer is yes. Stick around with me and I'll show you how it's done. Okay, according to my YouTube stats, about half of you have left now. So let's get down to business. Us cool people right here are gonna stick around and we're gonna learn how to laser engrave bottles without a rotary tool. Let's get going. Okay, so you may have guessed not every bottle can be laser engraved without a rotary tool unless you want to mark just a small amount of the bottle. But I found some really cool bottles here and I'm going to show you just how I'm going to do it. First, I'm going to go ahead and take some measurements. So what I'm presuming to be my laserable area is going to be 3 inches by 2 inches. So I got a 3 inch by 2 inch space here. Or we can look at about 75 by 50 millimeters. Uh, that's also be a good laser engravable space here. So let's go get this set up on the computer. I might post a tutorial on how to set this up on the computer. If you want that indicated down in the description below and I'll go ahead and uh, start those tutorials back up. Otherwise, let's get on to burning some glass. Okay, so I got it ready to lay out and ready to engrave this uh, bottle here. And I'm gonna do that now. I'm gonna see if I can't rig my doors to be left open for you so you guys can watch the process hold and hold because it's pretty cool. Yeah, I still have my Halloween outfit on my laser. I thought it was cute. I took the tongue off, but uh, I'm gonna leave it up until it falls off. But uh, you can check out the video if you guys are interested in watching that on how to cut uh, foam with the laser right here on this card, or maybe it's over here, I don't know. It's gonna be somewhere at the top of the screen. It'll pop up. Uh, let's go ahead and get this going. Ooh, broke. Actually guys, today I've decided to use my rabbit laser. Why not? I love this laser, it's my favorite one I own. Um, so let's get this set up. Okay, so I rigged my door so it'll fire with the uh, machine being open. This machine's just a little bit easier to do it than my other machine. That's why I'm choosing to do this one. Um, let's go ahead and mark out my line here to know exactly where I'm gonna be placing this bottle. And to, to do that, I'm gonna do a fast mark. So you set the machine to cut and uh, I do 100 millimeters a second, 25% power, and it's gonna mark out some lines so I know exactly where to put my bottle. So there's the two squares there that you probably just noticed. Uh, the one square is marking the outside most dimensions of the bottle, and then the inside square is marking exactly where I'm going to put um, the image on the bottle. So the important mark on here is the image on the bottle. Um, and so we know exactly where it's gonna place. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and switch my outline to red. Cause me, I'm self-taught. I made red be, don't cut, don't do anything, but acknowledge that it's there. If we were to completely delete the lines, your image is gonna be skewed and off to the side. So, okay. So I make the blue outline engraving. Uh, so we made the green outline, fast mark to red. So now it's just gonna know that it's there. So it's gonna keep your image oriented exactly where you want it. And I'm gonna change the uh, red outline that was the image to blue. And the settings that I'm gonna use for my engraving for this glass bottle is 400, I'm sorry, 45% power on an 80 watt tube and 375 millimeters a second. Uh, I would just slow it down a little bit to compensate if you go to a 60 or a 40. You can even engrave this potentially on a 30 watt laser or you could mark and engrave even slower if you wanna switch over to a diode, you can mark glass with uh, certain paints and additives. So let's go ahead and get this engraved. We got it focused to the top of the glass. So we're gonna go to the top of the glass of the spacer. By the way, this machine came with an auto focuser. I didn't like it, I ripped it off and threw it in the trash. It kept hitting pieces of plywood and stuff as if it got a little bit warped. Uh, so I've learned to not care for them and to stop using them and I just use the piece of spacer. So here I've got a piece of wood. This one needs to be about 10 millimeters away. So this piece of wood's cut 10 millimeters underneath here, and that's how far away the nozzle needs to be from the item. Let's go ahead and get this engraved here. So I'm going to set the orientation back to home. We didn't change the, um, we didn't change the home position, so we're back at home, and uh, we'll go ahead and engrave this. First, I'm going to switch out my battery, because you're almost dead, and I'm going to go ahead and time lapse this. Okay, so I'm pretty upset at myself. I forgot to hit record through the time-lapse video of the bottle. It turned out pretty cool, but I'm gonna go ahead and engrave the other side of this bottle <laughs> so you guys can get to see it. Uh, but anyways, I, I don't know if you guys captured this, but my settings on this, my settings that I'm gonna be using in engraved glass is 45% power on an 80 watt tube by 375 uh, millimeters a second. If 
it's nice when I press record, isn't it? So you guys get to wash the stuff. Here it is, it looks pretty good. All right, so this is a really light engraving at the 45% power. We could bump that up and go just a tiny bit cheap, uh, I'm sorry, a tiny bit deeper on it. So it will color fill a little bit deeper, but please keep in mind that if you increase the speed or slow down your laser, it's going to um, engrave deeper. And what essentially is happening is you're chipping the glass away. So your f detail may not be quite as good. It might be more of a, um, uh, really really rough and not a frosting so what we did the settings I just have we got a nice little frost so I'm about to show this to you here right now so you did a little cow now stick around guys I'm gonna show you one real quick on how to color fill this because that looks pretty cool I did a cow because if you haven't guessed it this is a milk bottle I'm gonna post a link in the description of this below because these are really really cool now don't be discouraged because you don't have a root rotisserie don't be discouraged because you don't have a rotary guys because I want you to think about one thing. So these are kind of a square bottle. Flasks would be nice, but this is kind of a square bottle and they come in a variety of different sizes. But think about this, rotary machine, one at a time. Square bottle, on my little blue machine over here, I could do 48 bottles at a time. This one's a three foot by four foot machine. I didn't even do the math twice as many as that machine, which would be, my gosh, four foot plus four foot, eight foot, which is 96 inches. That's how I'm doing my math, three inches. So 96, I could do approximately 96 bottles on this machine in one go, opposed to one at a time on a rotary machine with a rotary tool. Now, if you want to do cylinders, you're gonna need your rotary unless you want a little tiny area here. But just keep that in mind. I think it's a really good idea for uh, mass pro producing, if you want to mass produce bottles, getting yourself a kind of a square bottle would be better. Now, right now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to color fill this real quick. It's a real simple, easy process. Let's go over to the paint room. I'm sorry if I felt a little discouraged because I am here. I was supposed to be catching up our UV printing, uh, but I decided to make a YouTube video. Then my UT UV printer broke and I had to uh, fix the print head, which I don't have any videos on UV printer yet, but I'm about to. Um, but let's get this color filled. Maybe I'll be a little more cheery and have ink all over my face here in a second. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm really happy. I got the thing working. Bingo. Now I've decided this little cow, what kind of a cow? I'm gonna, let's put a little bit of black in that cow so it kind of gives the black and white feel. Ooh, done. Okay, so I'm very happy that I got the thing running back there. So I'm just gonna do this right here because it's uh, basically my paint room and where we assemble all of our signage. But anyways, we've got a little guy here and um, to color fill these, it's really simple. Don't overcomplicate something. All you do is get yourself some black latex paint. Now I could put a link of this in the description below if you want, but any good quality black latex paint or any latex paint will take this process about the same way. I could put the link in the description. Hopefully you guys will click on that because I get a small, tiny, tiny percentage like pennies if you guys do. And it just encouraged me to make more, uh, more videos. But we're gonna go right on here. See if I can't get a better shot up of this down. On the cow, this side we'll go ahead and color fill. And I'm just gonna kind of cover them completely up like this. So you're left with something like this. I do know some people like to actually take the inside of the milk bottles and paint them um, like a chalk paint. You could paint them a chalk paint on the inside and boom, that'd actually really make this guy pop. Um, you could put milk in it. That'd really make them pop. That'd be pretty cool, putting milk in them. So take this little guy, wipe it off right now. Got my ink cloth here that I was using to fix my printer. Again, if you ever want one, don't ask me about it right now because I'm going to tell you no. But if you do are interested in UV printers, let me know in the comments below. I actually have my second UV printer on its way to me right now. So um, are they worth it? Yeah, I'll put a link in the description below. If you buy that, maybe I'll make 30 bucks. Uh, but if you're interested in them, let me know in the comments below and I'll start doing some videos on some printing. But we've got um, the paint here and I just let this set up for a few minutes. And it's still a little wet. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we'll just wipe this out. Turn around here, you can kind of see it. And we're gonna buff it off.
and that way it's very, very subtle. Now, if you did a little bit of a hotter engraving, they'd be the pitting would be deeper, but keep in mind, it won't be as frosted so that engraving won't be as even. But there it is, a little tiny bit of a dark. Now you can see the cow a little bit better. See over here, no color, because it's no color. Now when we add a little bit of color to it. I gotta pull that out. But anyways, like again, don't be discouraged if you don't have a rotary machine. They're great, they're awesome. If you want to do onesies and twosies, if you want to do multiples, if you're interested in how to do multiples, make sure you check out this uh, video up here where I show you how to lay out multiple, uh, it, multiple items at once. I'm using cutting boards, but it references back to milk bottles, it doesn't matter. Um, again, I'm Jay, that's my to-do list. Thanks for stopping.